Hi students, welcome to the Pediatrics Pointers, the revision series in the subject of Pediatrics. Today I have to chosen the topic of CNS, Cerebral Palsy and the Muscular Dystrophy. So we talk here is the Cerebral Palsy and the first thing which you should always remember, this is non-progressive. This is non-progressive. In the Cerebral Palsy, broadly speaking, you get the questions on three types. One is spastic diplegic type. One is spastic hemiplegic type, one is choreoethetoid type, which is also called dyskinetic type. This abnormal kinetic movement, there is abnormal movement which can be chorea and ethetosis. When you say spastic or hemi, sorry, diplegic or hemiplegic, spasticity means this is also called as the pyramidal type. It is also called pyramidal type and this choreoethetoid type, this is something which we say also extra pyramidal type. So the moment you say pyramidal type, that means upper motor neuron lesion. So that signifies the deep tendon reflexes will be increased in both of them and the Babinski sign will be positive. What you need to remember in spastic diplegic type, what is the underlying lesion? The underlying lesion is due to the periventricular leukomalacia, which is seen in the preterm child. This is because of HIE in a preterm child causing the periventricular leukomalacia. If you see the child, there is seizuring of the legs, which is because of the increased adductor tone. Increased adductor tone in both lower limbs, so you get is the seizuring of the legs and there is presence of a commando crawl. If you see spastic hemiplegic type, this is due to cerebral infarction. Cerebral infarction, two important things to be remembered. If you see at birth, what you can get is the asymmetrical morose reflex and there is early handedness in infancy early handedness even if a thing is present near the right hand and if there is right hand having hemiplegia the person will use only the left hand so early handedness is a pointer towards the spastic hemiplegic type of cerebral palsy Choreoethetoid type is because of three reasons. One is due to kernic truss because kernic truss can damage particularly the basal ganglia and this is due to hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy in a term child which causes status marmoratus. Status marmoratus and this status marmoratus and kernic truss both of them damages the basal ganglia. They damage the basal ganglia. There is presence of the abnormal movements called chorea. Chorea are present when the child is awake and this movement disappears during sleep. So this is regarding the major types of the cerebral palsy. Then talking of the muscular dystrophy, the one thing you should remember, this is progressive. In cerebral palsy, I told you they are non-progressive and this is, I say, this is progressive. Is. So broadly speaking, you should remember two types. One is Duchenne muscular, one is the myotonic muscular dystrophy type 1. Duchenne muscular, the mode of inheritance is extreme recessive. So this is seen in the boys or the males are affected. This is autosomal dominant. So what can be seen, both male and female can be affected. Here in this Duchenne, absence of the protein dystrophin and the most common genetic change is the deletion. Most common genetic change is deletion. Here you get is the CTG repeats. It is a trinucleotide repeat mutation. This affects proximal muscles. This affects distal muscle. So the only muscular dystrophy which affects distal muscle is type 1 myotonic muscular dystrophy. Duchenne does not involve facial, extraocular and smooth muscle. This involves facial, extraocular and the smooth muscle. In the Duchenne, there is the dilated type of cardiomyopathy and here there is presence of cardiac arrhythmias. So this was in short the revision of cerebral palsy and the muscular dystrophy. If you are liking the revision series, do please like this. Do subscribe to this channel and thanks for watching.